All right, we'll call the uh, August 9th uh, planning and zoning meeting to order. Uh, the clock up there on the wall shows 6 o'clock, but uh, the phone clock shows 6.02, so uh, one of the two, I guess, we'll work with. Uh, let the record show that Commissioner Evans is absent this evening. And uh, next item will be uh, hearing a residence. Uh, it doesn't look like we have anybody here. So we'll move on to uh, item three, it will be the consent agenda. Item A, minutes for the July 26, 2017 regular meeting. Commissioners. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion that we approve uh, item A on consent agenda. I'll second and that. Motion by Mr. Outlaw and second by Mr. Columbic. No. Oh, did I second? No. I second. I, didn't touch I second. Oh, I'm sorry, Another. Commissioner Ray. Okay. <laughs> Any other comments or questions? All right. Uh, ask for a vote. Abstain. Aye. 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 Okay, next item, uh, workshops, discussion, public hearing, workshop, and discussion regarding zoning notification signs. Bryce? There we go. Good evening, commissioners. Um, we're going to have a conversation about uh, zoning signs. Um, so what I'm going to plan on doing is just kind of rolling through it. We'll open the public hearing. Doesn't look like there'll be anybody here, but who knows? Maybe someone will show up at the end. Um, get through that and then let you all have a discussion about it and ask me any questions that you have. Um, so what I just handed out is a little bit of some rough language for a UDC amendment that we're going to be proposing that I'll go over here in just a minute. Um, so since the last time that we met, we kind of talked about a couple different routes of going uh, between staff setting signs versus the applicant setting signs, different types of signs, so on and so forth. Um, staff's kind of evaluated these various options, and so I'm going to present to you the proposal that we have in full. Um, so what city staff is recommending is that the applicant is responsible for the signs as far as setting the sign, maintaining it, and then removing it at the end of action. Uh, the reason for that that we have identified is there's some extra steps for city staff going on private property to put signs in. There's also um, some potential ease with the applicant going ahead and setting that themselves. We'll cover a little bit more about location coming up and that city staff will be responsible for that, uh, but we feel this is the more appropriate route to go. Uh, the city would be providing the sign. So at one point in time, we talked about um, having potential vendors that would be ready to, to make signs for folks. We decided the easiest way is to kind of cut that one out and have the city actually furnish the signs. Uh, we are looking at potentially introducing a fee to offset the cost on that so that we kind of net zero uh, across the board on this and let the applicant pay for those signs. And we'll cover that section here in a minute. Uh, the city's responsibility would be to regulate and enforce the posted notice provisions, uh, as well as, again, furnishing those signs. There's a little bit of back work that we'll do also. And then finally, we would be required to do an amendment to the Unified Development Code to Article 4. So we'll talk about that real quick. Um, what I passed out to you is, again, just some rough drafted language. It has not been fully vetted by legal. It still needs a little bit of polishing because there's some items that we think we could do a little bit better job on clarifying. Um, but this is a kind of a rough item of what you should be seeing and what staff will be proposing to you uh, at um, hopefully the first meeting at, in September is our goal to have a number of UDC items including changes to some portions of Article 4 which is where this is at. But more or less what we're stating is that the signs would need to go up 
uh, no less than 11 days prior to the scheduled public hearing. This happens to be the same date that the 10-day uh, notices need to be postmarked to be mailed out. Um, so again, we'll have the signs up before people are even receiving the mail in their door. We figured that was important, and the duration of the sign is to stay up until uh, the until final action has been taken on that application. So all the way through the public hearings at City Council and then at whatever time City Council takes final action, either approving or denying. Um, additionally, the signs will be posted on private property, so on the subject property, uh, adjacent to the right-of-way. So they do need to be visible from the right-of-way. Um, the next sentence in here is going to state that the sounds should be, uh, or sorry, that sentence also states that um, it should be in a format as approved, along the right-of-way in a format approved by the city manager or his or her designee. The purpose of this language is to not limit this section to only be used by planning, but planning obviously will be authorized as a designee. Um, the goal and what we're thinking of the way this will work is city staff will basically provide them a little bit of an aerial map saying, I need you to put signs roughly in this location, this location, this location, um, and then we'll go out and verify that as well. But it make sure that I don't get all my signs for a longer piece of property all in one location or obscured behind an existing sign or a real estate development sign or a grove of trees or things like that. So we can regulate that via that provision. Um, additionally, the number of signs, size of signs, and content um, shall be in accordance with the development manual. So what we're going to do is we're going to adopt a policy into our development manual, which is where our current applications and checklists for all of our projects are located, um, are within that development manual, which is an electronic collection of those documents. And so we would have one about sign provisions for zoning signs and rough items on that that I'll go over here in a minute. Uh, the purpose of that is so that as things change, as we determine like, oh, signs need to be bigger than we originally thought or we need them spaced more frequently, we're able to make that change without having to come back in and modify the unified development code. Just gives us a little bit more flexibility there. Uh, additionally, it should be the responsible of the, uh, the responsibility of the applicant to periodically check sign locations and verify that they've not been vandalized or removed or blown over. Um, city staff will also be doing that and we will work in conjunction with other departments that are often in the field such as the building inspectors, code enforcement, uh, kind of et cetera, to talk about sign locations, kind of keep an eye open on it as you drive by, make sure it's still up, make sure people haven't taken them down or they haven't blown down or haven't been vandalized, so on and so forth. Uh, we do have a provision and this is one of the provisions we need to iron out just a little bit more uh, regarding uh, replacing missing or defective signs. The goal here is to have the applicant replace them. So uh, if a sign goes missing, they'll need to replace them. The concept behind this is that they'll have 24 hours to do that once they've been notified by city staff. So we get a report or we notice that the sign's down, we contact the applicant, say, this sign's down, you either need to go set it back up or you know see if it's blown down, it's just not there, we couldn't see it, maybe it blew down, go check. If not, you'll need to come back in for another sign and replace it. Um, furthermore, uh, we've got a little provision in here basically that it's unlawful to take down or alter the, uh, alter the signs um, without approval and that it is a violation of the UDC. This section has got to be vetted a little bit more through our legal, uh, but that provision in essence is to ensure that if, some, if, if somebody is caught physically removing the signs that, that shouldn't be doing that, that they're subject to a fine um, because I believe it is a Class C misdemeanor if my memory serves me, uh, is what this section that's referenced, the 1.11 violations and penalties for general UDC violations. So we do have a provision or overall UDC for that, that we can enforce if it gets to that point. You know, I would hope at first we could say, yeah, I don't be doing that. Do it again. We'll cite them. You know, we'll kind of work through that as a policy. Um, and again, the last sentence is removal or alteration that's beyond the control of the applicant shall in no way affect the, the uh, validity of the action taken. The action taking referring to, uh, in this case, a zoning case because that's the first provision that we're looking at bringing online is zoning. Um, but more or less, if there's disgruntled neighbors or so on and so forth that knock them down, vandalize them, scratch things out, whatever, that's not going to affect the public hearing. That's not gonna affect the outcome 
of the decision by both PNC and City Council where somebody can protest it and say, you didn't meet the legal noticing requirements that y'all have, so this is an invalid um, decision, start over, more or less. Uh, so that portion is there. We do have it as removal or alteration that's beyond the control of the applicant because, again, if the applicant's caught doing it, there definitely needs to be penalty there because they're not kind of playing by the rules. So we do have that provision. Um, as I was talking about the development manual and the kind of policies, roughly what we're thinking is a minimum of one sign per street frontage. So if you've got double frontage, you need at least two, one on each side. Uh, additionally, we're thinking from the surveying that we've done of other cities that do this, that we'd like to start off with one sign per thousand feet of frontage. So generally most rezoning cases that we normally see are going to have one sign. Some of the bigger subdivisions and PDDs will have multiple. Um, you know, we kind of wanted it, this provision so that we can space them out evenly and be fair across the board. So those smaller five, ten acre lots probably going to have one, whereas the big developments, PDD developments like Homestead or Crossvine that have a lot of street frontage will have multiple ones set throughout, hopefully to catch everyone's attention that something's going on. Um, again, we'll also have a requirement that they're e pretty much roughly evenly spaced and visible. We'll flesh that out a little bit more. Um, and the sign size that we are working on right now is an 18 by 24 sign. It'll be similar to the campaign signs that you see in that um, corrugated plastic material. Um, this is a little rough idea of some of the things that we're looking at putting on there. This is not a final item, uh, just a little thing we threw together. But basically a case number, existing zoning, proposed zoning, will have time, date, location of the public hearing, as well as contact information for city staff. Uh, one of the other things that we've been talking about, staff has been talking about rolling out with the uh, our new website update, which is supposed to go live in about a month, is to place all zoning cases in a very easy to find location on the planning and zoning page at the time that we're posting this notice, same time we're sending out mailers. So folks who don't call in or aren't able to can go online, find all of the items about the zoning request, including either a briefing by staff or the actual staff report that'll be presented well in advance of the public hearing date. So hopefully that will help cut down on the, I couldn't find where it was on the website and uh, you know, I couldn't get the information I needed and I don't know what this notice is about. We're trying to do everything that we can to reach out and get that information out there. Um, as to costs, uh, we are still looking at about 15 to $18 and again, proposing a fee uh, to city council to pick that up as a per sign fee to help recoup that cost or, or zero it out. Uh, we have worked with the with our uh, public works sign shop, and we're still going over it uh, over costs with them. If we can use them versus a third party, we're going to go with whatever the value capture is. Uh, based on using kind of a temporary nature sign, there's a fair amount of labor that may be unaccounted for via uh, public works. So we're working with them. If they have time to do them, we'll probably use them. Um, again, if their schedule's full because this is not something they originally budgeted on doing we may uh, find that it is better for us to outsource. Again, the goal being that we would have a fee to offset this so that uh, we're not in the hole on it and we don't need to raise overall rates. We felt the fee is f more fair than raising the rates on zoning cases um, because each zoning case is a little bit different and so each property should um, pay the fee differently based on the number of signs. I wouldn't want to penalize the person who's got single frontage and a very small amount versus somebody who's got a lot of frontage and a much larger lot. Uh, I want to treat them a little differently and we feel the fee is appropriate on that. Again, it's a nominal fee of about 15 bucks a sign is most likely what we're looking at. Uh, that runs about even with New Braunfels, who does $15 a sign, uh, and some of the other municipalities a little further away that do charge for signs as well. Uh, we also evaluated some reusable signs and things like that. We felt that that is not uh, a way that we want to go right now at the moment due to potential, so that there'll be extra cost up front on those because they're more expensive to produce at the very beginning. Uh, and our concern is not knowing what the vandalism and theft will be like. We want to start with the temporary signs, see how that works and kind of make changes as we go. Again, the ability for us to have those provisions in the development manual lets us make those choices uh, a little easier and still be consistent because all that information will be published and available to the public. Um, so that's all I have on signs and staff's recommendation. Uh, if you want to open up the public hearing, we'll kind of go from there.
All right. We'll open the public hearing at 617. And seeing as how we have only staff in the audience this evening, we'll go ahead and close the public hearing at 618. Okay, commissioners, questions? Right, uh, I just got a quick question for mm -hmm. you. Um, I'm looking at um, uh, the, um, the, the time frames, the dates. So we have one um, on uh, paragraph B, it says, before the 10th day, before the hearing date, we got that one. Then on um, farther down on B, we have at least 15 days. And then we go down to C and we have post this notice and we say 11 days. Um, I can understand the 10th and 11th or whatever it is. Would it just be easier for you guys if you said two weeks or 10 days or 12 days across the board to incorporate all that? Yes. I mean, so a little bit of the funny. Tiffany wants to go ahead and mail out, you know, oh, hold on. I got to do this on the 15th. Oh, no, this one's the 11th. This one's the 10th. Oh, my God, it's Sunday. What am I going to do? The, you know, I'm, it might be easier just to say 14 days or whatever meets the legalities. Yes. So one of the items that so the, you're referencing the written notice and published notice. So those are direct quotes out of Texas local government code because we all know the legislature loves to not be overly clear about things. Um, we deviated from that because we could have used the before the 10th day, before the public hearing, these have to be posted. We decided that 11 days is easier. Um, as we go through the rest of four, we will most likely be looking at updating the language on those other two sections. We don't want to touch those right now. Um, they're a little bit out of the scope of what we're working on, and so we want to make sure we can kind of keep our focus in, because if every little thing we touch, we started to fix, we would never bring anything to you all, because we would end up having to bring you a whole new UDC all at once. Um, so the approach that we've been taking is to be very critical about what we're proposing, what we're reviewing, and then being very specific about the language. Uh, most likely what you would see in future updates to that section is a revision to those clauses to be a little more clear where we say 16 days prior to the public hearing and 11 days prior. Um, again, haven't vetted all that through the legal department, but that's the way that we functionally use it is mailing note, mailed notice has to go out 11 days, has to be postmarked 11 days prior to the public hearing. So. Bryce. You mentioned uh, uh, there were some concerns of staff entering private property. What, yes. what are those? So there's some li there's always liability when city staff goes on private property. Um, so that's that's one portion. We would need expressed consent from the applicant in order for city staff to go on to private property. Uh, generally, property owners are going to know their property better than we do, so they'll know, uh, especially on the boundary edges, where there may be shallow private water lines or other things that we wouldn't want to stab into, um, various issues like that. Uh, so we feel that the appropriate route is to go this. What we, what we analyzed when we looked at a staff only versus applicant only is that we can't really mix those duties. It doesn't come out well where we say like, oh, the applicant, we'll, we'll post it, but the applicant, you're responsible for maintaining it and then city staff will take it back down. As you start putting those together, the, the code doesn't work out as well, um, and our concern is delegating those responsibilities, and so it needs to go all one direction or all the other. Uh, we also feel that when people come into rezone property, they're wanting the property to be zoned, so they have an inherent interest to keep the signs up and follow the rules, more so than city staff having to drive by every single day to monitor it. And so if we put the earnest onto the applicant, since it's their request, uh, we feel that's the most appropriate location and best use of city staff time. Uh, we also feel it will be slightly less city staff time for the applicant to set them than it is for us. Uh, because as you know, the way our city is shaped, if I have zoning cases on either extreme, it's almost an hour round trip for a staff member to go out there just to set a sign uh, it's a little easier if we work in conjunction with the other departments to uh, monitor the signs because they'll be down there at different times of the day, uh, most days, and that's a little easier for us to do as monitoring as opposed to initial setup. Thank you. So another question. The, uh, the applicant's going to be responsible for paying, paying for the sign. Mm -hmm. 
suppose there's a miscreant out there or it's a very volatile case and the, and the signs keep walking off. Is it 15 bucks every time the applicant comes in? It very well could be. I, mean, I think if we start seeing them disappearing constantly, it's probably some other things that we'll look at as well. So again, one of the items that we are looking to put onto the sign is that it is City of Shirts property and it is unlawful to remove. So hopefully that helps out a little bit. Um, I will say that when we were dealing with, um, when we were interviewing other cities who have this requirement, for the most part, they said that the biggest one is not even people stealing them. Often it's them getting knocked over, but they don't know if they're getting knocked over because of wind or weather versus folks walking by and knocking them over. But very few had concerns about vandalism who have been doing it for years. So we may have some growing pains at the very beginning. Overall, I think for the most part, at the times where we think somebody will take it, um, the bigger issue is I think they'll want it left up because they can get more of the community on whatever their viewpoint is, I'm assuming opposed to if they're taking them down. The, um, the items in your slide presentation, mm -hmm. are those just extra information or is that gonna be incorporated into a UDC? The development manual portion? So okay. what, what, what was given right, no, to you- okay, no, is, no, never mind, never mind. This portion is going, to be, is, is going to be a proposed amendment what I've handed out to you this evening and there'll be a little bit more to go with that because obviously we'll have to touch the uh, zoning procedures section out of five to incorporate uh, posted notice. But what we would do is we would have a, an actual policy document that goes into the development manual um, that discusses sign spacing, sign sizing, content of sign. So we have that all laid out and it's available to the public, even though we're gonna give them the sign and tell them where to put it and how many they need, they know going into it. So somebody who's proposing a zoning case knows, oh, I'm proposing a zoning case to the city of Shirts, I have to put up posted notice. My property's this big, I'm gonna have to do it in accordance with these regulations. We're just moving them to a different location so it's a little easier for us to tweak as, uh, as necessary. Again, if we find some issue with that in the future where we get a lot of protests or, or complaints about it, we can always come back and add it into the UDC. Just a little more difficult to change, a little more time consuming to make quick fixes. I just have a couple of things here, Bryce. Uh, first of all, I, I think you guys are, have certainly put a lot of thought into this. Um, and whatever we come up with, you guys are the ones that have to run the program, not, not me. So I, I, I don't want to get too far down in the weeds and tell you how to do it. Um, I have a little concern about the signs uh, and only being 18 by 24 uh, and, the, and, and what what you proposed um, number one you know the whole purpose behind this thing is to let people to notify you know an extra notification step um, that something's happening on this property um, and what I look at here when you try to put that I'm not sure when you put that on an 18 by 24 that that's going to get the job done if somebody's driving down the road at I don't know 35 45 55 miles an hour um, so just take that into consideration when you look at the signs and you know I don't know if Tony with his super printer could mock you up a couple and so you could see uh, I know during my campaign last year uh, trying to figure out what to put on that little bit of real estate uh, took a lot of thought to try to get it across so that people could see it you know um, but basically, that, that, that's the only comment I had. I like the idea that, you know, originally we were talking about the city putting up the signs, but you've raised some, some very valid concerns. Um, and it sounds like what you've come up with um, is certainly a workable um, way to get the job done. So, our, our goal is to, before we finalize the design, it's to mock up a couple, drive by, see how it works. We don't expect that all the information on it is going to be readable by driving by. The big important one is public hearing notice. And so again, we've, we've talked about different ways that we're going to do that. I just wanted to bring something just kind of as a really rough preliminary mock-up to say, generally this is the content that we want. 
we'll shift it around a little bit because there may be some portions that we can make smaller as people drive by and say, oh, it's a zoning case, I don't care, whatever, versus slow down, get out, see what's going on. Kind well, good. As, as I said, it looks like I, I think you're headed in the right direction. So. And there, there, there's a lot of white space on the paper. The, you can jumble around size and font and spacing and all that kind of stuff. So I, I think there's room to make things a lot bigger. But the, the public notice signs I've seen throughout the places I've lived, it, it wasn't much. It caught your eye, and if you were interested, you went to read it. If, it. if you weren't interested, screw it. So it's just, a, it's just another thing, another opportunity, because people don't check the city website once a month or once a year un unless they're directly involved. So a yellow sign or red sign, something will catch somebody's eye, and if they're interested, they'll, look, get, they'll go look. But I think you can manipulate this to get more stuff on it. Absolutely, and again, you know, some of that goes into the spacing as well. While we're proposing a thousand feet, as we start getting some of the bigger projects come in, we may say that's really too far apart. We need them closer, 500, 750, and we would be able to make those changes as needed, kind of on an experience base. Uh, I agree with the thought that you've put into it, and how we split it up between uh, amending the UDC and, and also having policy in the development manual. Uh, the one question I have for you on this is uh, where it says the applicant shall replace missing or defective signs within 24 hours from the time that the city official notifies the applicant that the signs are missing. So if a city employee notifies the applicant at 3 o'clock on Friday that the sign is missing, does he have to replace it by 3 o'clock on Saturday or 3 o'clock on Monday? Uh, as it's written right now, it would be 3 o'clock on Saturday. So. Um, don't know that that's unrealistic. Most of the time when we have people doing rezoning cases, they have a representative who's local, even the folks who are property owners in other states. It's an easy enough item for them to come by and take care of. So well, again, we can, if it's 3 o'clock on Friday, they may not be able to get here in time to get a sign and then to be able to place it, and they would have to wait till Monday morning to get a sign to be able to... Because they have to get the sign from you, right? Yes. So why don't you just say within 20, the next available work day, so, and then you're done. We, we can look at making that change as well so as a business day. I mean, as a, a business day versus a true 24 hour. So yeah, just just to make it that. fair for the applicant. Yeah, that. within one business day. Yeah. Okay. Commissioners, anybody have anything else? Okay, that's uh, just a discussion item, so we'll be bringing that back. We'll move on to the next item request and announcements. Request by commissioners to place items on a future planning and zoning agenda. All right, uh, hearing none, moving to 5B, announcements by commissioners, city and community events attended and to be attended, and continuing education events attended and to be attended. Anyone have anything? All right, next item, 5C, announcements by city staff. And we have a couple. Uh, so we do have one new site plan. Uh, it's the break check. It's a revision to the break check uh, there on, on Mobileville Estate Subdivision at uh, Cabana and I-35. It's currently under construction if you've driven by. Uh, the only amendment, and that's why I only did this one page, was uh, to this rear elevation, which is the side that faces the lows, um, so the left side of the building if you're looking at it from 35. There was a slight material change where this whole portion underneath this band used to be um, uh, split face CMU, and they have since changed it to be stucco, and then the bottom part is banded in cast stone. Uh, so it's a very minor amendment, but I wanted to let everybody know about that. There's also a very small amendment on adjusting the sidewalk to move it around a power pole. So it cuts into the lot a little bit and they'll be filing a, a, a public access easement. Okay. I believe Tiffany wanted to ask everybody for commitments for the APA conference. I think I got everybody already. Okay. All right, uh, that being said, we're down to item number six, adjournment of the regular meeting. Do I have a motion? 
Chair, make a motion. We adjourn the belt the uh, and a second. A second. Mr. Ray, and meeting adjourned at 632.